With the US presidential election looming, militias that have lain dormant since the January 6th attack on the Capitol are showing signs of becoming more active once again. The militia movement grew in 2020 following a string of unprecedented events. Stay at home, that is the order tonight as the coronavirus pandemic spreads. The country braces itself for another wave of protests over the death of George Floyd. Donald Trump has not conceded this election. It culminated in January 6th, but this would stall the militia movement after key leaders were jailed. Oath Keepers founder Stuart Rhodes given 18 years in prison. Now, there are signs that militias are regrouping online, fueled by swathes of disinformation. And it is feared that the result of the 2024 election could re-energize the movement once again. Militia groups have a reputation for controversy and turning to violence. Members are often seen unlawfully policing demonstrations while heavily armed. We are the law of the land. Unlawful militia is a group of individuals who, without any federal or state authority, form an organization that engages in paramilitary activity, paramilitary training. As they practice and train, they really prioritize firearms and Second Amendment rights. Take the Boogaloo Boys, highly suspicious of the authorities and the media. They say they're not supremacists, just fighting government tyranny. These groups all have some level of conspiracy theorizing, so they tend to believe things like there is an invasion of migrants coming over that is akin to like a war. The U.S. Border Patrol, what are you guys doing? In 2019, a militia group called the United Constitutional Patriots began unlawfully arresting migrants on the New Mexico border. The only problem is if we shoot on the hill, it'll be an international crisis. We're too close to the border. It would save some time though, wouldn't it? Most unlawful militias have had an anti-government ideology, but at various times it takes on whatever the cultural issue is of the day, and particularly any cultural issue that Donald Trump is embracing. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. As early as his inauguration, Trump's promise to put America first resonated with the militia movement. It's really impossible to overstate the role that Donald Trump has played, not just in the militia movement, but in some other far right groups more generally. He had a number of sort of whistles toward these groups. The action I'm taking today will eliminate federal overreach. They'll take away your Second Amendment, which we will never allow to happen. Migrants are marching toward our southern border. Some people call it an invasion. Many militias and other members of the anti-government movement really supported Trump because they felt that they were aligned in their ideologies. And it showed. The number of new militia groups grew in the first year of Trump's presidency. One of the clearest examples of Trump activating these groups was during a presidential debate with Joe Biden. Are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups? Who would you like me to condemn? White supremacists and right proud militias. Stand back and stand by. Again, stand by means until I might call you, until I might need you. And of course, the Proud Boys immediately monetized that. T-shirts, paraphernalia, etc. That also sought to empower militias not only to feel that Trump was potentially on their side, but also that if you did something like storm the Capitol, that wasn't something that he was going to denounce you for. But has the link between right-wing militia groups and Donald Trump been exaggerated? The right-wing militia subject is, is basically an inflated talking point here in the United States, and ultimately, you know, Donald Trump has no control over what they do. Antifa, you know, and, and the anarchists that were working with them are, are dramatically more destructive and, and violent than any quote-unquote right-wing militias. You look at what happened in Portland, you look at what happened in Washington, D.C., you look what happened in Minneapolis, and that threat is, is dramatically, you know, more worrisome, in my opinion. Whether or not Trump provided the fuel, events in 2020 would provide the match to ignite the militia movement to new levels. Americans are marching through the streets in their thousands, demanding the lockdown be lifted, and the president is in their corner. New York's iconic streets were littered with the debris of rage over the death of George Floyd. The president has repeatedly made claims of widespread voter fraud without any evidence. The campaign is also asking supporters to take to the streets in protest. During the coronavirus pandemic in 2020, a Michigan militia group wanted to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer and put her on trial. 
those 13 suspects taken into custody, seven of them alleged members of that right-wing militia group over restrictions aimed to stop the spread of COVID. Militia groups tend to believe there either is tyranny in the government or there's going to be tyranny in the government, and that's what they need to fight against. Being, you know, asked to wear a mask, for instance, that was tyranny. The death of George Floyd and the subsequent Black Lives Matter protests were seen as a provocation by militia groups. A lot of people started to believe that those protests weren't really Black Lives Matter, but instead were somehow being orchestrated by Antifa or maybe even Russia. In their view, it became a sign of anarchy that could creep into their own neighborhoods and something they therefore needed to stop. After Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election, Donald Trump refused to concede. If you count the legal votes, I easily win. Then eventually, when they felt that there was this tyranny related to the election, not only did they come out to smaller protests, there ended up with one very large one. More than 450 individuals were prosecuted for their involvement in the January 6th attack, including many linked to far-right militia chapters. Militia groups were very much at the forefront of that attack. They were certainly not the whole crowd, but they were at the front lines. Four additional members of the far-right Oath Keepers militia group have been found guilty. Leader Stuart Rhodes and another member were also convicted of seditious conspiracy. The fallout from January 6th definitely had an impact on the militia movement and in the decrease of groups. The lull after January 6th was in response to the arrests and prosecutions and investigations. I don't know that the numbers have decreased so much as they have decentralized local militias that maybe call themselves things like community preparedness groups or things that have a different type of name. Well, my position basically is we better get our act together before the giants show up. And they're like knocking at the door right now. With the 2024 election looming, militia are using online platforms to regroup. So in recent months, we've seen some militia groups kind of migrating back to Facebook. Um, Facebook seems to have slackened off on some of their monitoring of these particular groups. They've had to sort of scatter and try to figure out how they can have an online presence to recruit. There is one major exception to this, which is Rumble. Rumble is a self-proclaimed free speech video platform used largely by the far right and conspiracy theorists. Investors include tech entrepreneur Peter Thiel and presidential running mate to Trump, J.D. Vance. Essentially like a YouTube for extremists. And that allows a lot of proliferation of false information that gets used to create the narrative of violent activity. And there are constraints on the government because of the First Amendment. False information, disinformation is generally protected unless it is an incitement to imminent unlawful activity. The outcome of the 2024 election will once again provoke militia groups. The question is, how much? I think if Trump wins and does treat militias as a kind of private military, that's really bad news for US democracy. Effectively, in some places, will end civic participation of some groups. He's already said that he will pardon uh, the insurrectionists of January 6th. That's going to be very much a white flag for militia groups. Will those Antifa and anarchist groups reemerge if Donald Trump gets reelected? Unfortunately, I, I think that's a possibility. If there is a Harris win, I do think there will be protests and there will likely be some protests that are armed and involve paramilitary groups. But I also do not foresee another January 6th on that scale. Regardless of who enters the White House, militia appear set to use the next presidency to continue their cause.